there, everyone, and thank you so much for uh, joining the session today, where we'll be looking to tell you how we're delivering hyper automation uh, with AI technologies here from SAP. I'm Andy Lawrence, and I'm the lead architect uh, for business operations self-healing, um, and looking forward to walking through capabilities and solution, how we are uh, managing our approach in this area, and showing us uh, what, uh, what, what we're all about um, overall. So just before we dive into that, I just want to set the scene uh, and show you where we sit as far as uh, the SAP Intelligent Enterprise goes. So business operation self-healing um, is a, uh, a cloud-delivered uh, application. So we deploy this uh, on the business technology platform. We use a combination of the application runtimes, HANA data persistence, um, a number of the different technologies like conversational AI, um, robotic process automation, and the AI factory uh, here at SAP as well. And our application provides uh, an integrated uh, way to consume uh, and apply uh, all of those great technologies um, in an intelligent way uh, to supporting you in running businesses day to day. So what do we mean by uh, hyper automation? So we aspire to deliver an unmatched customer experience um, for our customers um, where we are looking to fix issues that we either detect in the environment or hear from the end users. And we want to do that uh, automatically, seamlessly in the background from the monitoring side. And from the end user side, just provide really simple, intelligent, intuitive uh, ways to interact with their core processes um, and be able to understand what that issue is uh, and help them uh, bring that issue to resolution uh, in the shortest time possible uh, here overall by combining all of the technologies uh, that we're bringing together here uh, as part of the business operations self healing service. In terms of what we focus on, um, we are looking to be able to take away a lot of the repetitive tasks um, through automation to release uh, employees, uh, whether in support or delivering the direct business um, of a particular customer uh, on those higher value tasks to really focus where it matters uh, and increase the performance uh, in all of those areas there as well. How do we do this? So we look to apply uh, machine learning to get understanding of what's happening in the customer environment, whether that's training uh, our models with ticket history to know where we can send the right tickets to, um, or understanding uh, the data distribution in an environment so we can propose the correct values for missing data or incorrect data um, that exists uh, within a, uh, one of the processes that may be causing uh, a disruption there as well. We then apply robotics. Uh, to analyze that further and in detail and look to create uh, resolutions um, uh, for that to actually take that problem away automatically for the end user at the point of uh, contact with us um, or equally on the self healing mode once that issue has been detected again use the robotics um, uh, and other services there as well uh, to take action uh, in the connected applications uh, and solve those problems. So how do we do this? Well, a real key important element for us is being able to execute on data that we get in as close to real time uh, here as possible. And we don't go out and acquire all of that data for ourselves because other systems and solutions exist in customer environments today, like monitoring solutions or AI ops platforms there. They're done as for specific application sets and they may be working at an infrastructure level or the technology layers. Um, and different combinations will exist out there. And they're very good at what they do. They're very tuned into the things that they are monitoring. Um, and to be able to try and uh, cater for all of that within this product doesn't uh, give them the credit they deserve and also takes us away from the real focus for what we want to do is to understand what's going on in the environment and take action to resolve that. So at the start of this process, those monitoring platforms would connect to the systems to acquire the data uh, and look to collect that. And they will measure that against their own um, configurations to see um, whether or not any situation has breached the threshold by which they would normally just raise an alert uh, within that monitoring platform and route that to the relevant operations team or support team to uh, investigate further and, and take action. But that's where we'd like to step in here at that point. So we would like to consume the event from those monitoring platforms into uh, this operation self-healing and understand and map that uh, to content uh, that we have uh, in relation to that specific error. We can then uh, understand uh, that situation in more detail based on the data provided, and we'll know where it's happening in the landscape and what type of error it is. Um, we do that level of analysis and see whether or not uh, we can resolve the problem. And if we don't do that, uh, able to resolve that, we're then able to um, uh, document that and route that to the right people. But basically taking an action on that event every time uh, either to take it away 
um, or pre-diagnose it um, for the other operators who will end up making the right choice on how they resolve that further. So how do we do that? So what we have on the screen here now is a, a representation of our hyper automation architecture. So over the next few minutes, I'll look to walk you through that and give you a better understanding of, of how this is put together. We'll start over at the top right where we say, see the triggers uh, here. And this is where we can have uh, those monitoring platforms or other applications raising events and sending them into us. We can start with Solution Manager and Focus Run where we have um, uh, an integration uh, that we can deploy into those uh, products that are able to send uh, events into our APIs, um, into our sort of resolution execution area. Other products are there as well. So we could take security incidents, uh, either from IDMs, uh, man identity management, or the GRC solutions, or other landscape management uh, type tools that would be out there uh, here as well. Equally, from the business process side, um, we can uh, take things from say, SAP Process Insights, another dimension of the business process intelligence suite here, or other third party applications uh, in those areas. Um, any of them that can send an event um, with a payload to us, we would be able to. Uh, ingest that into our APIs um, and analyze that and start comparing that as to how we would uh, execute the resolution there for us. That happens down on the execution side on the middle left uh, of this picture of the resolution execution. And there's three key components to this. We have skills that we deliver out of the box through all the blue squares and cubes uh, that are available here. And we can also host alongside this uh, custom skills in relation to errors that we haven't covered uh, so far or ones that are very specific. Uh, for a particular customer, a customization they've done, or a third party application they're using. Um, for, uh, we haven't had any standard content there, there available. We can combine that with the context um, of where that problem occurred. So the information we received through the event and our understanding of the customer's landscape, we will be able to connect uh, and understand where we need to execute that and work out how we connect through to it. So we're able to connect through to on-premise systems using the Cloud Platform Connector, uh, MBTP, or uh, other areas of the SAP Cloud uh, that's accessible from the platform to uh, any other application that would be uh, accessible um, over sort of public internet um, with the right security and credentials, of course, to connect securely to that. We're then able to trigger the execution, um, for which will do the analysis um, and ideally the resolution for the issue that's been raised and trigger that using the appropriate runtime environment. So we have a lot of content we developed today on robotic process automation. Um, so we'll be using that uh, engine for triggering those. We also have uh, content we've developed um, in microservices uh, for ourselves, OData services that we can then trigger also to connect through to the same systems uh, in a similar way. So when we move over to the uh, right-hand side of the middle here, this is how we interact um, with the different products that would be uh, available. Uh, so we have standard content for uh, ERP and S4HANA. Uh, as well as uh, we are able to do some solutions there in success factors. Uh, Microsoft Azure is another example uh, where we can understand what's going on from a cloud resource perspective, uh, giving operators insights as to their status, uh, being able to uh, restart them, resize them, um, all of those typical day-to-day -day operations that they may uh, be needing to do. We can extend this to other uh, applications in the SAP cloud um, uh, uh, or other products uh, there as well as the content uh, sort of builds out. But essentially through this uh, mechanism and connectivity that BTP allows us to do, we can connect through to any of those applications there. That deals with a self-healing sort of approach there where we receive the event or trigger uh, from an external application, pop that through the resolution engine, and then execute that um, uh, against the backend in, uh, in applications uh, where the issues reside. Coming down to the bottom right now, in what we mark as intelligent, this is where our chatbot sits. You'll see this later on presented as part of uh, a customer portal uh, demo for us, but um, the chatbot can be deployed uh, as part of any existing portal or in standalone for customers uh, to access. But ideally, it's in a place where they'll be going to see that today. In terms of how that works, end users come to the chatbot and start having a conversation describing the issue that they're having. Uh, we will use uh, intelligence in the chatbot and also looking up um, against resolutions and content that we have today to understand, see if we understand that issue and gather more de details from them. What we can do um, as part of that, um, we can use, um, uh, if we're getting more data and looking to uh, route this to maybe log a ticket on the end user's behalf, 
um, we can use machine learning uh, there to be able to classify the ticket and send that through to ticketing systems, as you see over there on the le uh, bottom left hand side around that, where we have out of the box integration for ServiceNow, BMC Remini Cloud, and Solution Manager ITSM, uh, and any other ticketing system um, uh, with uh, APIs to allow us to create, read, and update tickets. Equally, if they're looking for knowledge items, uh, we have a machine learning model uh, that we train with the customer's knowledge data. Um, looking and searching against that, uh, if they're describing a particular issue and being able to refer them um, uh, through to the relevant articles to see if that's resolving their issue then um, uh, as well. But another example of how we can apply the machine learning there as well. Equally, if there are problems with master data uh, in the environment, we can train machine learning models again on customer data from the relevant application. And where data is incorrect or missing, um, we can augment the end user by providing them with a proposal um, and a rank list uh, by sort of confidence levels there of what's the right value to fill uh, that particular field uh, in that part of the organization at that time. So many different ways to apply that and, and give, give the users insights um, uh, as well as um, being able to sort of uh, understand uh, their issues sort of day to day and be able to learn from those interactions too. Whilst we're doing all of this execution, um, a key thing for a centralized automation platform uh, today uh, would be for um, us to be able to trace and provide visibility of everything that's going on. Without that, we'd never be able to account um, for what we have done, the decisions have been taken, and then we wouldn't be able to build trust uh, within the customer environment that this uh, uh, platform and uh, its solutions are operating in the correct way. Very important to be able to gather that uh, as we go uh, and deliver that uh, level of transparency. And we also replicate this into the tickets uh, that we log and uh, shadow tickets as well to be integrated to the existing support processes that are there and running um, in the customer environment today. Effectively allowing us to be operating as an intelligent autonomous member of the support team, uh, helping them out in the day-to-day -day activities. Going up to the final block uh, up here uh, and to the top left is where we're getting insights and so building on uh, what we've uh, logged uh, and done there. What we can get from that from a product point of view is to understand where improvements are needed or some extra solutions would be required, uh, building out our roadmap um, there as well, helping the customer understand how the users are using the platform, uh, any uh, known improvement opportunities in the system. So maybe they've done a release introduce some new functionality into these applications. It's now generating a, a new peak of errors uh, coming in there. Users might come to the platform to look for a solution, um, but there's none there, but we can highlight these gaps um, to customers uh, and help them understand and be able to plug those maybe a lot earlier than they would uh, be able to realize today. So hopefully that gives you a good feel for our architecture, how we can operate in both the self-healing mode, self-service mode with the users coming and talking to us through the chatbot technology, centralized sort of skills management area and resolution engine uh, with full transparency and logging running through the environment as well. In terms of how this sort of comes together, the architecture itself is complete you know, key foundation stone for being able to deliver this and provide this integrated uh, integration across the AI technologies that we have here and deploy them seamlessly uh, into operation. And that would be great, um, but what makes that significantly more valuable is the content that we provide. We provide content today in IT, cross-line of business areas, dealing with password resets, security role requests, uh, and other sort of uh, cross uh, LOB topics, content in sales orders today, and we're expanding that across HR and finance procurement into the future and hosting custom skills there. So that allows us to deploy a platform that's not only there to be able to create new content against, but to be able to deliver value straight away, activating that in the environment, helping on those high volume repetitive tasks um, to uh, ease the burden on the operations as well as uh, reducing disruptions too. And that's really that combination that makes up the business operations self-healing service today. How do we do this in terms of the content? So we talked a little around um, some of these already, but from a self-help point of view, being able to connect the user to the knowledge uh, items instantly allows that to give them a, a resolution to the problem without having to log a ticket or speak to anyone on the support desk at all. By being able to capture that information as well, if, uh, what they're looking for, and if it's not relevant, they can describe issues further and improve the quality of any ticket that we do log um, if we can't solve the problem just by uh, connecting them to the right area of knowledge. On the self-service side, as soon as they hit a problem, they can come to the platform, have a conversation with the chatbot, and look to see if there is a resolution there. Whether that is a simplified way of requesting the right role, 
allowing them to do password resets in an application they've locked themselves out from um, where they're not having to log a ticket and wait for a, a slightly uh, later response or understanding uh, other things going on in the environment if the system is there or a performance issue is occurring we can give some insight as to what's going on in the system as well as understanding from them any further details that are affecting them then be able to log in higher quality tickets and route it to the right teams uh, for them to deal with straight away reducing that time for delivery uh, and also improving service quality overall and on the self-healing side uh, being able to look at the events that are coming in, be able to trigger the resolutions 24-7, um, uh, uh, reducing that operational effort and also increasing service quality and becoming a fully autonomous member uh, of uh, the support teams. So I've shown you around the architecture um, and how we're doing that and giving some examples there around the content. So what better way to uh, bring this to life rather than to hand over to my colleague Alice, who's going to walk you through some demonstrations uh, of some of the content that we deliver out of the box today. Thank you for the introduction, Andy. In this use case, we will show you how you can use the business operation self-healing platform to reset your system password. Bosch chatbot can be embedded into any web-based service portal very easily. To begin, you start a conversation with Florian, which will request a password reset. Florian will then ask you for the system and client number that you need to reset your user in. After this, Florian asks you to confirm whether the password reset is for you. If allowed, Bosch can be configured to reset a colleague's password. You will not see the password, but the colleague will directly receive their new password via email. Florian will now reset your user and show you the new password on the screen. You will also receive an email showing the password if this setting is configured. Here you can see a user is fully productive in just under a minute, which is significantly faster than a traditional ticket-based process. Once Florian has completed the operation, you are able to leave your feedback of the process. This can help customers understand the success of the platform and also understand the user's satisfaction when using and experiencing the platform. In this use case, we will perform a how-to request using the Bosch platform. To begin, instead of logging a ticket, a user can log on to the chatbot and request help from Florian. Florian will ask you to describe the problem and from here, we'll analyse your description and provide a ranked list of possible articles which could help. After reviewing the articles, a user will determine whether the proposed solution has solved the issue. Bosch has allowed the user to continue their work with little interruption. As always, Florian will ask you to confirm whether your issue is resolved and will also ask for any feedback or additional comments. In this use case, we will show you how to resolve sales order issues interactively using the Bosch platform. In this example, Bosch can resolve an issue when a sales order cannot be created due to a master data issue. Here you can see a user trying to create a new sales order. After entering the material number, they are receiving an error message saying that the material is not listed to the customer. After clicking for more details, the user can see that this is error message V1118. At this point, a user will normally have to contact a support desk to get the data corrected. This process can take time and until it's solved, the user cannot create a sales order for their customer. Using the Bosch platform, the user can provide the details of issues and check to see if Florian can resolve the issue for them. Florian will ask them for more information regarding the error. The user will provide the system details and error code and Florian will check to see if a resolution is available. As we can see, Florian is aware of error V1118 and can provide a resolution. The user can choose to trigger the solution or look for knowledge documents or create a quality ticket. In this case, the user chooses to run the resolution. Florian gathers more information specific to the error and asks for a valid business reason. This is stored for audit purposes later. The user confirms the data is correct and Florian then runs the resolution. In this case, the fix is triggered to run in the background using SAP RPA software. Bosch can use different technologies like REST APIs to execute fixes as well. We can see here that the resolution has worked successfully and the end user can continue and complete the sales order, saving them time, effort and disruption.
Florian will log every action into a ticket in the customer's ticketing system. If the action is successful, the ticket is closed and there to refer to later. If unsuccessful, the ticket is automatically routed to the correct support team. You are always able to provide feedback which helps Florian to understand how well he is performing. In this use case, you will see Florian's self-healing failed IDOX in a system. Here, you can see several failed IDOX with a status 51, shown as red. This means they are unable to be processed for a few reasons. Each of these IDOX relate to different errors. In this example, the errors are V1118 and V1117. We can see here that our monitoring has picked up the failed IDOX. This alert has notified Bosch of the problems with the failed IDOX, which will show up in the alert inbox showing a red status. The alert shows you that there are currently six failed IDOCs which Florian will attempt to resolve. After refreshing the IDOC list, you can see that the job has been completed successfully. All the IDOCs have been correctly processed and have generated the sales orders in the system. In the monitoring alert inbox, you can see that the IDOC monitoring has been changed to green as the issues have now been resolved. In this use case, we will resolve a customer master data issue by using user augmentation and workflow. Using an example, we will exemplify how incomplete master data can stop an end user from creating a sales order. When creating a sales order, our end user receives a warning message explaining that they have not entered the payment terms. A user can enter a value, but there are so many to choose from that it's likely a user would choose the wrong one. As we check the customer's master data, we can see that the payment terms have not been maintained. As a result, we will now fix the root cause using our virtual assistant Florian to do so. Primarily, you explain the issue to the chatbot and provide the name of the system which is experiencing the issue. Florian will then offer you an available resolution which is relevant to your query. From here, you can either resolve the issue or access further assistance. Florian will ask for the details of your master data and you can fill in the respective fields. The machine learning model will then use those fields as inputs, allowing it to predict possible payment terms. Bosch uses trust levels, which is set by customers. If a value is higher than the trust level, then Bosch can implement the fix immediately. If lower than that level, Bosch will create a workflow as shown in this example. Florin will ask you to cross-check the details and then trigger a workflow. You are welcome to leave feedback and help Florian understand their performance. An approval request was created here and the reviewer can see that a user has picked up a wrong value. This can be corrected and sent for final approval. The workflow approval enables change to occur, solving both the sales order and root cause of the issue. The workflow approval has triggered the fix to run using SAP RPA. Now Bosch has resolved the issue, let's try to create another sales order. Here we can see that our payment terms are automatically populating. I hope these demos have given you a great feel for how Bosch can support you. Now back over to Andy. Thanks very much, Alice. Those demos were awesome and I really hope uh, people have got a good feel for uh, what we can do uh, as a solution today, looking at the different areas uh, that we ran through there. So just uh, moving on a little bit here to just to give you some insight as to how we uh, deliver this today and what our plans for the future are uh, as well. So currently, uh, uh, the business operations self healing service is deployed as private cloud uh, in the business technology platform. The customer needs to have an account uh, and also needs to have that as a, a cloud platform enterprise agreement, uh, as well as any of those services uh, that we are using are all available uh, under that uh, title of engagement with us. 
We do need uh, support from an implementation service point of view to help customers get up and running. And there's a fixed price offering available through max attention, premium engagement contracts, as well as professional services as well. And we don't mind which contract it is. That's uh, uh, really a customer choice as to how they wish to engage on that. Um, that service uh, will um, deliver uh, essentially the, the content, deploy that to, to the customers, uh, run through knowledge transfer and help them um, uh, support, get that out uh, to production beyond uh, once it's been validated and so on from there. And we deploy all of the content into a customer environment and have uh, them pick and choose what needs to be activated uh, from that. And we'll increase the content level for that uh, over time as well. Looking to the future, we're working on a some next generation SaaS based offering for, um, for Bosch uh, moving forward. Um, and that will be deployed uh, on the next generation runtimes uh, in cloud platform and um, also introduce uh, a different subscription model uh, as part of that. People who go for this today can continue to use what they're doing as well in that fashion, but also coming over to the SaaS side at a later point in time where we're able to facilitate migrations. We'll look at a beta testing program uh, towards the end of the year and at some point um, going into 2022. Um, that will look to come in reality and uh, also deliver an increased level of content um, as part of that. And also utilizing any new the execution technologies like SAP process automation to expand the capabilities from our runtime point of view. So just to give you a bit of insight here uh, from a live customer, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, uh, who are live with Bosch today and continuing uh, to roll that app across their environment. We have a couple of slides describing a global reference and says how they've gone about this and the benefits they've been getting um, here as well. So you can read about this in more detail when you receive the information and the slides um, following on uh, from the session today. So in terms of being able to sort of wrap this up and summarize where, where we are today, we can deliver 80 or so high value use cases out of the box with hundreds of conversational skills uh, in just as little as four weeks. Preparation time for the customer when they're deploying, but once we kick in, we can do all of that knowledge transfer uh, around it, um, run through all of the use cases, bring everyone up to speed in there and support the initial validation in those non-production environments to that point. And then we can hand that uh, roll out as well from the customers there. Uh, very quick to deploy uh, and very quick to start taking value from that once live um, and supporting the end user community. Our ability to do self-healing and self-service, allowing us to run in the background and uh, reduce any disruption, um, and also be able to augment the user and help them make the right choices to resolve their issues um, or request things, um, as you may have seen earlier in one of the demos, who workflows and have those approved uh, for operations here as well. By deploying this platform um, uh, with its content, customers don't have to invest um, in creating this for themselves with all of the extra skills and the development effort they will require not only to deliver that, but to maintain that uh, and expand that into the future. Um, it's dramatically reduced by taking this approach. And our abilities to sort of monitor and understand things as well uh, really gives people insight as to how these things are working in production. So with that, I'd just like to wrap up today. Thank you for all of the time you spent here and I hope you've learned a lot. And I really hope you're able to explore the rest of what TechEd has to offer, looking at the new sessions uh, and uh, networking with peers. And I'll be doing some of that uh, there for myself. All that remains for me to say is thank you so much uh, from me, Andy, and also from Alice. I hope you've really enjoyed the session and um, enjoy the rest of TechEd. Thank you.